Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Exposed and this is part two of the last POV, the last point of view video. We're actually gonna go through and, and just, I wanted to walk through and just break down a bunch of the different images that were taken on that video. And just kind of have a lot of people that ask me for commentaries on this kind of stuff and uh, just thought we'd jump in here and kind of break down what it was that drew me to the scene, what it was I was looking for in the scene, why I composed it the way that I composed it, and, uh, and just everything like that. So we're going to head over to the computer and uh, just kind of break some of these down for you guys. So I'll see you over there. All right, so here we are. Uh, just kind of walk through some of these images. I don't, I don't quite know how this is going to go. This is going to be completely new for me. I'm just going to probably touch on a couple of the images real brief, um, but I might go a little bit more in depth in some of them. So to start off, I'm just going to kind of go in order uh, from the video of how we went and, and did the walk. So um, right here, this is the uh, battle axe image for lack of a better term. I'm not going to give all these images different names, but um, the thing that, that really drew me in is I, I wanted to shoot through this fence and I actually still included it even though this didn't get the um, type of look that I was going for. Sometimes with the rangefinder you miss um, what you're looking for. And I was actually trying to include more of this other side of the, the fence in here. Um, but with the parallax on the rangefinder, I uh, misjudged where I should be shooting through. But um, I just, I kind of liked that peering through the, the fence and uh, just because I, I was unsure if I was going to get it, I did move over and I did shoot. And this is the image that I actually really like from this. So um, this is the side of a building here in town. Um, another building was next to it years ago. Over the last couple of years, it's just been this empty lot. Uh, they haven't put anything in it yet. But um, with how fast Grand Rapids is actually growing, I'm, I'm surprised. I would be surprised if they don't put something in this extremely soon. Um, they were going to build something, but I think the funding fell through on it. But I absolutely love the the battle axe, you know, the paintings all over. It looks like this brick was almost like salvaged from something else. And I don't know if this is how they wanted it to look. If I, I don't quite know the story of this. It looks like this was a reclaimed um, wall of brick. Uh, but I just wanted to actually catalog this. And I've gotten a couple shots of it in the past, but just catalog this before the the city covers it up with a, another building. So um, part of my work as of recently is uh, trying to catalog this city as it continues to grow because things are disappearing at a rapid pace. Um, so this is gonna be something that I'm gonna talk about uh, as we go through the rest of this, but uh, one of the big things that I've been drawn to lately, and if you've been watching the point of view videos over the last couple of times you've seen this, is one is reflections, but two is these abstract just kind of I don't know, I'm trying to push my work in a, in a way that uh, you just get these different abstract elements that, that kind of remind me a lot of my graphic design days. So uh, you get different things like uh, this circle here, this line here, uh, the line here, um, this is looking in. Uh, I might actually go in and, and kind of dodge and burn this uh, vent structure a little bit more just to kind of define it. but. Uh, I don't mind that my arm is in here, I actually kind of like that it, it just dirties up the frame a little bit, but I just like that everywhere you look in the image there's just different lines uh, and different points of interest. So kind of looking through, obviously you guys seen the video, so this is looking inside, uh, this is the ceiling, and then down here would be people's desks inside some sort of work area. Uh, I don't know if there was any people in there that were watching me. Um, but. Uh, and I, I just like shooting through and getting all the, the reflections of the cars, getting the reflections of the buildings. I actually don't know, it looks like the circles on the inside of the structure, not from a reflection from the outside. Um, but one of the things I absolutely love about these is as I'm going through and developing my images, as I'm going through and uh, scanning them and, and doing the tonal contrast and everything, I get to personally reapproach these scenes and kind of uh, pick apart. It's almost like a, a Where's Waldo or one of those I Spy, I Finder games and stuff like that to where it just uh, kind of brings, brings the image more to a graphic element than it does anything else. So going on, I um, absolutely love this scene. So coming up on this scene, I got super excited. You see, I, I kind of started peering through the window. I was going to see if I could actually go in, but it looked like the place was closed. I didn't even try the door. Um, but shooting through, I wanted to include this post here uh, and just kind of get the whole rule of thirds thing going on. But uh, I just absolutely love this picture frame, just framing the wall. And it's just so interesting. I absolutely, 
absolutely love the three different chairs. Um, it's almost like a, a schoolhouse feel, um, but a upscale fine art area, or I don't know. I, I just love this scene, uh, and it's just so much of what I want to see in my work. Here's another part of it. Um, this one I got, oops, let's get rid of this. So this one here, we got the, the door frame again, um, which I don't mind. Again, I, I wanted to include the uh, chairs down below. I think having the chairs uh, in both of these is actually a big storytelling element of, of the scene. I don't think it would be as powerful of an image, in my personal opinion, uh, if these chairs weren't here, if uh, the structure here wasn't here, and also if this logo uh, wasn't there, and just kind of making this point of interest in the foreground. So. And these are my personal uh, opinions on these, so if you disagree with these, uh, I am more than happy to uh, to hear your opinion down below. Um, but I, I, I kind of like the, the slanted angles of this. Uh, I don't think I did that intentionally, but uh, I like how everything turned out. These these two shots are, are really some of my favorites from this day. Um, walking up on, the, on this scene, uh, I just really like these kind of storefront... Uh, church ministry chapels uh, they're just so unique this one's been there for I was actually just talking to one of the ministers uh, outside of it on Saturday and this one's been there for like 35 to 40 years or something like that and um, just seeing like the heritage of this they bring in uh, the homeless into uh, into this ministry on Fridays Saturdays and Sundays and uh, just serve them. They give them warm clothes or warm meals and dry clothes and uh, just really cool. So obviously being that it is a chapel, I wanted to include the cross. Um, I, I absolutely love that it includes the, the little can light up here. Just kind of shows how kind of, I don't want to say bootleg uh, this area, like this chapel is, but just kind of how DIY this chapel is. Um, I think having the, the clothes sign really just kind of I don't know. I, I wanted to tell the story of like these are the days off, um, and then I, I do love that there's this like old King James Bible that just kind of sits there. So uh, I tried to purposely put myself in this corner to where it wasn't uh, distracting from the rest of the image. I knew that I was going to get the uh, reflection in the the window regardless, but I wanted to kind of diminish it as much as possible. So the next one here, uh, I included this. I would actually. This didn't give me the, the effect that I was hoping for. So if you could see in the video, if you go back, you could, you might be able to see, but there's a, uh, a Christmas wreath actually within here, and you could actually see the uh, Christmas uh, lights hanging up top. But I really, the Christmas wreath is what drew me into the scene, and then I composed everything else around it. Uh, I definitely wanted to include the, the 111 uh, building marker here, and uh, just kind of include just that point of interest down here in the lower third. Uh, I do still, the, the reason why I do still really like this image is you have this element here, you have this element here kind of playing these two parts, and then just these giant structures uh, that make almost this grid going all the way through. Uh, obviously you have your rule of thirds here and here, uh, the breaking line here, and then the breaking line here. Um, so to me it, it still plays as a, a very strong graphic image but I was really hoping to get that um, Christmas wreath so I might try and dodge that out but I'm not too confident that I'll be able to. Here this super simple image um, just the the composition of the different elements the ge uh, geometric shapes and uh, just the tonality there of this cloudy day. Right here again just getting this S curve that runs through and just kind of viewing in it almost kind of to me feels a little Alice in Wonderland ish. Uh, or like uh, Wizard of Oz with the r yellow brick road. Um, I just like that peering into uh, just this world, almost this fantasy world, this kind of thing that, that fantasies are made out of. Um, so here, actually the biggest thing, obviously there's a lot of geometric shapes, a lot of lines. I just love the, the composition of this, but the thing that actually drew me in is uh, the distinct break here. So you have this old brick here that was repainted but just the, the, like, I don't know. I don't quite know why this is painted the way that it is, but I really like that to where it's exposed brick up against this very, like, fresh, clean, contemporary facade on this building, but then you have this painted brick, but then they decided not to paint it over in this corner for whatever reason. Maybe legal issues, maybe these guys own this part, I don't know, but uh, just really interesting. So just simple things like that. 
I'm not afraid to uh, to take a simple picture and take a picture just to catalog something super simple uh, that I come across. This one, this is something that I absolutely love. This is again, I was talking a little bit ago about um, just these. Uh, just abstract scenes that I've been drawn to lately and uh, just really kind of pushing these uh, reflections into a very graphic graphic space uh, and I just I really enjoy going through and kind of twisting reality to a point to where uh, this really makes you have to search in and see obviously there's a, a table here from the inside um, these are the poles right here for the door, the inside door. So what I'm actually looking through, you seen in the video is, there's an entrance right here that goes in here, then there's an entrance right here. Uh, and then you obviously got the street going this way, the street going this way, and everything breaks down in there. So you got these interesting lights on the inside. Um, these are, this is a light, this is a light, this is a window to the outside from the inside of the thing. But then you look back here and you have the street lights, and, uh, and just the, the shafts of, of street in the reflection. I just, I absolutely love that, that it just brings it to such an abstract um, just window into the world. Again, here's uh, the other side of this building looking in. Uh, again, you have this interesting um, circular lamp up top. You have just some office desks. Uh, I don't think anybody was at this desk no, nobody was at this desk, but then you have this uh, this car coming through, which the car could almost be sitting at the desk. It's almost like it's on top of the desk. It could look like it's a uh, model car of some sort. I don't know. Uh, just different things. You have the, the words that really can't be read, um, but they just kind of add these little bits of familiarity in, uh, in the images. Again, another one. Uh, I don't want to break these down too much, but... Uh, again, just working off of all these different shapes. I love looking inside of this building because there's these giant globes of uh, light that were going all over. Then they had these large uh, areas on the ceiling. And just all these circular, you know, orbs along with all these rigid, rigid structured lines. So just really enjoy that kind of stuff. Oops, let's get... So coming into, um, into this one, oh, I lost my layer here. Coming into this one and, and some of these other ones that are uh, towards the end here uh, was really just playing off of the way that the light is hitting the buildings and hit, hitting just these uh, these windows and just the amazing cloud structures. So uh, I've, I've photographed these buildings so many different times, but getting to see them in different light, getting to see them in different uh, just scenarios of weather. Uh, it just really opens up like a whole new possibility of being able to approach the scene. I've probably, I probably have four or five different images from the last four or five years uh, of shooting probably this exact image, but getting to, to capture it in different uh, seasons, in different lighting conditions, it's just, you're always approaching a new subject at that point. Again, I've, I've photographed this building here uh, multiple different times, but just the way that the, the gradient of light falls down uh, I just absolutely love the light falling on these windows and just the gradients here. Uh, and just, again, it's a simple uh, geometric shape photo, um, but getting to see just all the different tonal ranges that the cloudy days uh, really do give is just fantastic. Again, I, I just love the, the cloud structure in this glass windowed uh, building. Uh, this is the Amway here in Grand Rapids. This is one of our tallest buildings. And uh, just getting to, to see, actually, I don't even know if this this image may not have made it into the video. Um, so let me cover, I have another image that's like it here in a second. Um, this one here, I, I included this one. I do like, I waited for this guy to start walking across. I wanted him to look over at me, so I kind of put myself in his way and uh, just kind of waited for him to, to look over, glance over real quick for me to cra grab the shot and uh, just got that so I really enjoyed the the person walking over here uh, they have a super tiny head um, but they're looking over at us I love all the American flags I love just the geometric shapes that are happening and just the leading lines coming down to him I actually don't mind the Audi right there uh, just because I, I kind of like a little you know haphazard scene so here's a, another uh, just you know looking at these different cloud formations within the glass and then uh, I've been building a series of American flag shots 
uh, quite a bit lately, so getting these shots in there and getting these flags in there just uh, adds to the image for me. This scene here, uh, I think in the video I actually split it up just because I was... I actually shot this one first, so in the video I kind of cheated my storytelling towards the end just because I was running out of song and I wanted to uh, just fit them all in there, so it worked best to do the next one. But uh, I absolutely love these, these lights, just casting this interesting light pattern. Uh, even though the lights are circular, it looks like they're bouncing off of, or they might just have four individual lights. So it's not a, a perfect circle that it casts up on the, the ceiling, it's kind of this four-pronged uh, square. And uh, just like how the tonal range kind of goes from this gray to the highlights down to the blacks down here. And then again, just this interest. I was shooting a uh, super expired 400TX, um, so Tri-X. If I overexpose it any, uh, which doing the Sunny 16 rule in here, uh, I did overexpose it and kind of trying to retain some of those those details it kind of gets lost so it's kind of a crunchy image but I like it regardless um, so here's uh, another American flag image just kind of playing with the geometric shapes and then um, this here again just playing with uh, with shadow with uh, reflection with just abstraction uh, I love that here I am um, taking the photo here's these two walking down uh, and just the interesting way that you know these there was only three different place settings laying out on the table within this window that I was shooting into. And uh, just being able to place all three of those on all three of us, uh, I just, I don't know why. I just think it, it's really interesting. It's almost like wings coming off the back of these guys or, uh, or like important documents that they're carrying underneath their arm. Or, I don't know, there's just these different like storytelling things that, that I just absolutely love uh, getting to go through and just see as I'm, I'm you know, going through and editing these. Uh, stuff that I see in a snap moment when I'm shooting, but um, stuff that I get to explore even more as I, I look back on the images. And then this is the last images, uh, last image of the roll of uh, the other side of the Amway. And again, just the way that the light and just shadow was falling on this. The thing I love about cloudy days is uh, it's like a giant softbox in the sky, but it falls off pretty quickly and pretty drastically into, uh, well, obviously I crunch my shadows with the, the tonal ranges, but um, that fall off from being closer to, you know, obviously the giant softbox of the sky and then getting down closer to the ground, I just, I love the way that the shadows fall off. So. Um, those are those are the different images from that video or from this video. Uh, again, these are these are probably some of my favorites here. And then going down to the um, just different reflections and shooting through these windows and just making these crazy abstractions. I just really enjoy this. This is where a lot of my work is going lately. Um, even though Grand Rapids has been pretty busy lately, it just isn't as busy as I would hope. Um, it's not like Chicago busy or anything like that. So doing street photography and doing all that uh, has just kind of been boring lately because there's not too much to, to layer the scene with. So um, I've been layering just by shooting through and and getting to, it's almost, a, it's an interesting way of layering too because I get to shoot into a subject, but I also get to shoot myself because oftentimes when I'm shooting reflections, I'm included in it, but then I'm also including everything behind me as well. So it's kind of this, interesting foreground middle ground background but in a very very skewed and different way um, so your foreground is actually in front of you the middle ground is actually myself and then the background is actually behind me and uh, and it's just a really interesting way of breaking these things down and, and just exploring these different elements uh, as I go through and and walk the city on a weekly basis so I'm probably going to be making a video soon, um, just kind of talking about that whole direction of where everything is going with my my personal work. I'm still making a lot of the same stuff that I was making. I uh, still have a couple different, a bunch of projects that I'm constantly feeding with new images and constantly making, um, you know, more complete to be able to do different zines on. But uh, I've been really, really interested and very inspired to shoot uh, just a lot of these abstractions and a lot of uh, just the reflections and kind of molding and shaping the scene in a, a very interesting way. So anyways, I, I hope this uh, just kind of helps to kind of understand a little bit of, of what's going on through my mind as I'm shooting this stuff. Uh, I've gotten questions in the past about um, just different commentary videos and uh, 
just what it looks like when I'm going through and shooting. So uh, I, I, I wanted to try this format. I also thought about because I'm using my uh, phone on the top of my camera for my point of view setup, I've thought about using um, like my headphones and my phone and doing some commentary during the moment too. But I also kind of think that that's going to uh, take away from some of the aspect of shooting and I'm not going to be as alert as I would like to be. So uh, let me know what you guys think about, about this format. Let me know what you think about just kind of walking through some of the images and kind of breaking down what uh, drew me to them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this series. Uh, it's not even a series, but on these images, uh, was there any of them that stood out to you? Do you disagree or agree with any of the things that uh, I was breaking down in any of them? And uh, do you have any questions about any of my thought processes I'm going through and shooting? I'd love to hear those. Leave those in the comments down below. If you're new or visiting to the channel, well, welcome. I have tons of other videos that I would love for you to check out, so feel free to peruse the rest of the channel. Also, you can like and subscribe down below, and feel free to share any of this content with your friends, and uh, I'd just love to connect with them as well. So uh, let me know your thoughts on this, and uh, I appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Until then, shoot more film, and, uh, and yeah, get out there and do some photo walks. Thank you guys. Peace.